Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and today we are working on a product that I've been putting off for a long time. So this one's been coming for so quite a while. This is an Eibach uh, Pro Truck Lift Kit. It's part number E80 230060222. So this will fit the 2014 Plus GMC Sierras and Chevy Silverados 1500s. So, like I said, we're going to be upgrading the struts and shocks, so the front and the rears and the truck all the way around on all four corners. Um, right now I have two blown rear shocks. I could hear it every time Basically I hit Basically what we're looking at is monotube struts and shocks. So we're going to be replacing the front struts with the uh, monotube. Uh, they've got a part number in here. I'll have all the part numbers down in the description. So this is the, the OEM spec monotube shock from Eibach. And then what it does in the Pro Truck lift kit, it comes coupled with a new spring. So the spring, my understanding is it's going to be slightly longer than the OEM spring, and it's a hell of a lot beefier. Um, and then in conjunction with the longer spring and the new monotube shock, just like you have with Bill Steen and a few other of the shocks out there, you have these adjustable rings. So it, with these two together, and you have this, if you set this at the lowest setting with the snap ring here and then have that ring go down, you'll get a two and a half inch level on the front of the GMC Sierra. So that is what we're going with. However, if you want to go, let's see, if you want to go higher, so by moving the bottom perch mount up the shock, which basically pushes the top of the shock up, you get a few more inches. But since I have stock control arms, I'm not going that crazy with the lift kit. I want to stay at two and a half inches and I want to stay with my OEM control arms. So again, you always have that option to go up and down on it. We're going to start with the bottom one, I believe. Um, that'll give us the two and a half inches of lift we want and that is what I want at the end of the day. So looking at the rears, again these are monotube shocks as well, um, nothing really to them, they bolt in the top and the bottom. Now what these do is they allow for an additional one inch of travel in the rear. So in order to kind of complement the one, one more inch I'm getting on that one, I went out and purchased a new set of rear blocks. So unfortunately Eibach doesn't make rear blocks for the truck. So I had to go to rough country. So I picked up the, these are the two inch rear blocks. So essentially what this will give me is anywhere from a three quarter to one inch increase in the rear. So you pull out the stock blocks and then you slide these. This is these. the same rear block set that comes in their two and a half inch uh, leveling kit. Uh, so you come, it comes with the lower spacer on the strut, the top mount spacer, as well as the rear blocks. So these are the rear blocks from that kit. I just purchased, purchase the blocks because I'm going a different direction with the rest of the suspension but this kit is six it's rough country six five three two all right before you get started on the rear obviously you're gonna have to jack up the truck and then remove the rear wheel right. in essence here's what we're gonna be doing um, once we got the wheel taken off we're gonna remove that stock shock so it's a 21 millimeter bolt and nut down here and then a 21 millimeter bolt up on top. The nut is welded into the bracket, so you just need to get the bolt loose and then the shock will drop right out. It's pretty easy to do. After we take off the shock, we're gonna go over to the bottom of where the rear, the OEM lift box are at, and we're gonna remove these 21 millimeter uh, nuts here. And then once those are removed, we're gonna use our jack, which is gently pressed up against the rear differential and we're slowly going to lower this portion. So right, the, the whole differential, since these U-bolts will be undone, the whole differential and the whole rear axle will tip this way, which will give us room to remove that OEM block and then slip in the new Rough Country block. All right, just want to show you real quick just a side-by-side -side of what the OEM block looks like next to the Rough Country block. So again, this is the OEM block from the uh, passenger side that I already removed and did that side. The blocks with these pins, these pins face down and they go into a little hole at the on the top of the axle and then there's another pin up on top that goes down into here uh, holding everything and all the uh, the leaf springs together so side by side here is the stock and then here is the rough country so after I did the um, passenger side I noticed I had a three quarter inch lift total so basically we're taking out a I'll say one and a quarter block and we're replacing it with a two, I'll say it cleanly a two inch. All right, real quick, I just wanted to show you um, 
the stock versus the Eibach shock in the rear. So roughly about the same size. Again, this is a mono tube, so it's a completely different design than the twin tube that comes on the truck. But I wanted to show you uh, what I was talking about when I said my shock was blown. So this is the OEM shock, one-handed. I could compress the whole thing and there's no rebound to it. Whereas the, uh, the Eibach one, I can compress it and it returns back to its original size. So those rears are definitely blown. This is off of the driver, um, the passenger side. Um, but I'm willing to bet that the driver's side one's the same. So anyway, that's 75,000 miles and this one blew. All right, so we got those 20 millimeter 21 millimeter nuts off of the bottom of the U-bolts that are holding the axle to the leaf springs. Then we also mounted our I-box shock there. So it's mounted up at the top and we're just gonna leave that dangling for now. So now that everything is lowered, or unbolted, we could slowly lower the jack that we have on the differential so it frees up that OEM block. So one of the things I'm gonna do you don't want this axle dropping lower than you absolutely need it to go um, because you got a lot of brake lines here and if you pull it further than it needs to go you're going to start screwing up with stuff so if in the event I lower that too fast I'm going to put a jack stand here to catch it that way I don't go past the drop that I need so we'll pull these off there we go. so now that we got all these guys off and freed up out of the way we could slowly lower that axle and get at the OEM block there. So these OEM blocks, at least on the other side, were stuck in there pretty good. So it just popped straight out. Now one thing I did notice is there's a lot of corrosion in here. So what I did on the other side is I took a wire brush and dug out. I dug out the pinhole where the block has to fit in there and then I just took a wire brush and scraped up everything cleaned it up. And that is the bottom of the spring, or leaf spring. So that goes into the top of our new block. So I may have to go down a little bit more, but uh, now that we got everything freed up, I could go ahead and get that rough country block put in. All right, we got the OEM block out and I just want to show you some helpful hints on this one. So again, that pin faces down, so it goes into that little divot here on the top plate of the axle. Now the other thing you're gonna notice is these blocks have a pitch to it, so they're slanted one direction. You wanna make sure that the taller end right here is in the back. So the whole intent of having that that pitch or that, that angled or the, the tapered block is to make sure that your differential angle is still maintaining within OEM tolerances. Now, again, this is a tiny lift considering all the other ones are much bigger. Um, so going up three quarters of an inch isn't gonna make too big of a difference. So did it really need to be tapered? I don't think so. All right, so there is our block. So the driver's side gave me a little bit of a fight here. Basically what happened when I loosened up everything, the axle went forward and I wonder if it had anything to do with the shock over there pulling it potentially or pushing it and it essentially pivoting off of that. So maybe in hindsight, I should have left the shocks off until the end, but I ended up getting I had to basically pull the whole axle shaft this way so the pins lined up. So the shock looks beautiful underneath there. It's a shame that I'm going to put my spare tire back here and cover it up. But uh, we could go ahead and take the support off of the differential. Everything should be hanging out from the suspension. And then I can lower the truck back and tomorrow morning we will start the fronts. All right, guys, it is a new day, and we are going to finish up the fronts here. I already did the driver's side just to kind of get an idea of what's going on, on the, uh, as far as work needed. But we're going to start on the passenger side here. So just an overview of what I currently have. You can see I got the Rough Country 2-inch leveling kit. We're removing that. We don't need that anymore because with the new Eibach shocks and springs, we're going to get 2.5 inches of lift out of that just in, in and of itself. So no more uh, little spacers needed on this. So in order to get that shock out, so we can borrow this upper half, the upper assembly, as well as the bottom perch, we need to do a few things here. First, we're going to remove the upper control arm from the, uh, the knuckle here, and then what we're also going to do is remove the sway bar end link. 
between removing these two things, we should have enough play up and down to get that shock out. Before I jacked the car up and took the tire off, I already went ahead and removed the nuts on the top of the shock. I left the outside one, the one I can get to, through the wheel well, uh, finger tight there. That way, you know, this doesn't just fall out when we free it up. Um, it'll give us kind of an ability to uh, slowly lower everything out and kind of a controlled fall per se. So basically, once you get everything unbolted, we're going to pop the control arm up and off. We're going to put a jack stand underneath the hub to hold everything in. And then we'll be able to pull everything down enough to get that shock out. So what we're also going to do is remove the nuts from the bottom of the shock. That way everything's freed up. And once we get enough play and getting everything down, we will have enough uh, room to get everything out of there. All right, we got the shock out. So just a couple of hints here. So basically, like I said, we undid this top mount uh, or top upper control arm ball joint. And basically what you do is you end up hitting it with a hammer to loosen it up, leave the bolt on there temporarily. And again, I had just one bolt or one nut holding the shock in here. So once I loosened this up and was able to remove the upper control arm from the steering knuckle here, I was able to use a jack, a floor jack underneath to slowly lower everything. So it pulled everything down in kind of a controlled manner because what's, what this is gonna wanna do without that upper control arm, it's all gonna wanna spin backwards. And I also undid the tire, tie rod here too. So all of that is gonna wanna spin backwards. So you gotta slowly lower it, let the shock itself fall out. So, or I'm sorry, let it slowly drop down through that hole down there. And then you're gonna end up pulling it out this way. So the shock will go down and then out. So what I'm gonna do now is put the spring compressors on here and pull this spring off of here so I can loosen up this uh, king bolt or king nut here, pull off everything, and then we'll just reassemble everything back onto the eye box struts, and then we'll be ready to reinstall. Real quick, before you pull the shock off the truck, you wanna make sure everything, you have an index line. So what I did is, this is the bolt on the outside of the car. I drew a line straight down from that bolt all the way down the shock. So you see it on the boot, and then you see it up at the top mount, and then we'll also do it on the perch. This gives you a frame of reference. However, if you forget to do that step, there is a secondary option. So there's a notch right here on top of the shock. And what that'll do is it'll line up with a notch inside the housing. So there's a notch in here that that little, or a little kind of bead that that little notch lines up with. So again, I drew a line straight down this bolt and it went straight down everything outside. That way when we reinstall the spring, and, or I'm sorry, reinstall the boot and everything on the I-Box shock, it will, everything will line up. You want everything seated properly because if you don't, then you're gonna start hitting bumps and hitting bumps and turning is the worst thing you could do for a misaligned shock. So again, you just wanna make sure everything's indexed. All right, now that we got the OEM shock taken apart, I wanted to show you everything that you're borrowing from the OEM kit and then everything that you're gonna be replacing. So we got the struts side by side here. So first, this is, these are the adjustment rings. So in our application, with the iBox springs, we're gonna run this little uh, spring clip here, we're gonna run that at the lowest setting. What that will equate to is a two and a half inch lift. Again, only in conjunction with the spring. Now we got instructions in the kit that says that these equal something else when you're not using it with the spring, only with the spring, run it at the lowest setting. If you're not using the spring, I believe that will run everything. And if you're gonna reuse the OEM spring, I believe running the spring clip at the lowest setting will be your OEM stock height. So the reason why, if you look at the springs side by side, the iBox spring is bigger than the OEM spring. And what that'll do is that in and of itself will give you your two and a half inch lift. So we're gonna move this little spring down to, we're gonna move this little spring down to the lowest setting. So the other things that we're gonna borrow off the OEM strut is the bottom perch. So I already sprayed it with penetrating lube. What I'm gonna do is hit it with a hammer and lightly tap it around in a circle and it'll free up. There's just dirt and everything holding it in there. And then we're also gonna steal this piece. I don't know exactly what this piece does, but it seems to be the bottom for the bump stop. So the bump stop that slides up and down on the shaft here hits this and instead of hitting your plastic cap on the inside of your shock, it's gonna hit a metal uh, plate here. 
So the other thing you're going to notice is we got this little metal collar here. So originally when I was looking at these things, I had no idea what that's for, but I actually accidentally found out what that is for. So here's our bump stop. Now this was inside the boot like that with the mounting plate on top of it. So if you open up, if you open up the uh, bump stop, there's a metal ring in here. So let's see if we can get that out. So you can see that metal ring is chamfered just like that one on the iBox spring. Well, you gotta replace this ring with the iBox one because the iBox shaft on the monotube shock here is wider than the OEM shaft. So we need to get rid of this. This goes back with this guy and then we're gonna reuse this piece or we're gonna use this piece inside the bump stop. Then we have a new king nut because it's a different thread size and different shaft size. Then we're gonna reuse the top ring inside boot and the top mounting plate as well as the little plate there that the old king nut went on top of but instead of using that nut we're going to use the one that came with the uh, iBox spring or iBox strut so i'm going to use a spring compressor set at the highest setting here so try to grab the highest ring on the spring so you're compressing it evenly i earlier i tried to do it from i guess in the middle here and it was getting really hard to get the you need almost like an inch of compression to fit it on this uh, strut here. So try to grab the highest uh, turns on the spring. That way you got plenty of room to uh, compress the spring down at. But we're gonna clean up everything and then we're gonna go ahead and install it on the iBox strut. So again, remember we have that index line. The strut, the iBox emblem, and this portion is already angled. So this piece or this side of the strut points out. So our line was drawn on the outside of the strut so we need to make sure that when we're reinstalling, everything is lined up so that line goes straight down the front of the strut. Um, doesn't really matter for the bump stop, but it does matter for this plate, which you can see kind of grabs onto the rubber boot, as well as this plate. So this plate is what I was showing you. This is the top mounting plate. It has that notch that lines up with something inside uh, the strut mount. But also uh, that bolt right here is the bolt that we're going to be using to basically grab everything and swing everything into place once we mount it. So these, uh, bot the bottom bolt heads do line up inside here with these. So this, it just kind of grabs everything. So you really can't mess it up. As long as you draw that line, it kind of helps you knock everything out. Um, but other than that, just a straight line all the way down. All right, well, there it is. So we got the spring in, or uh, I should say the strut assembly in. So again, just to recap how to get that, the OEM one out and the aftermarket one in. And this works with any sort of strut. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is undo the sway bar end link, undo the tie rod end, and then undo the bolt on the bottom of the upper control arm. So once you do that, hit this with a hammer to free up that ball joint. Then at that point, you can undo the 18 millimeter bolt nuts at the top of the strut. And then you can undo the bolts at the bottom. And then once you're able to free this up and remove that, use a jack stand to slowly lower the whole control arm assembly. And that'll allow the shock to come down. Shock will drop down or the strut will shock, drop down and then you can pull it out this way. Use a spring compressor, do whatever you need to do to uh, build up the new struts that you're gonna put in and then just basically reverse everything. So again, keep that control arm assembly low, drop the strut in, thread it through the top Use the bolt on the outside or the nut on the outside to help hold everything in there. And then just push the control arm assembly down until you can get those bottom mount plates on top of the lower control arm. Then once you do that, definitely get a, have a bolt ready to go so you can thread it through there so you, everything lines up and you don't screw that up. Then just tighten everything up. So reverse it. So first thing was tightening up the upper control arm. Then I tightened up the tie rod and then I did the sway bar and link last. So the last thing I'm gonna do is lower the truck on the wheels, and then I'm gonna finish putting the bolts up on the, or the nuts up on the top. So effectively, this gave me a two and a half inch lift. Right now it's measuring at a three inch lift, but once everything settles in, it'll drop down to probably a two and a half inch lift. So I'm gonna lower the truck, I'm gonna throw my wheels on there, I'm gonna do the top nuts, and then tomorrow I'm gonna to take the truck for alignment. Anyways, that's what's, uh, what's all involved with swapping out the struts on your uh, 2014 to 2018 GMC or Chevy Silverado 1500. Pretty simple. Problem. All right, I wanted to give the shocks a couple hundred miles to get set up in, and then um, you know I figured that was enough 
mileage on a truck to give me kind of a firm understanding of how well these the struts and shocks are going to perform. So overall, very happy with how well these struts and shocks are performing compared to my OEM ones. Uh, like I showed you earlier in the video, the OEM rear shocks, one of them was blown and I'm pretty sure the other one was on its way out. And the, the front struts just really left a lot to be desired. So after switching out everything, as far as height wise to the top of the fender edge here, I'm at 39 and a quarter up front and 40 inches on the rear. So I have a little bit of a rake, um, but again, that's because I added the two inch rear block in the back. If I didn't add that, that was, this truck would be perfectly level. Um, other than that, the truck itself feels planted. Uh, for a while there, I was looking for a sway bar because these trucks, for whatever reason, I don't know why these don't come with sway bars, but all the other trucks, you have options out there to get them. Um, but the GM trucks, they have a little bit of a sway to them, in my opinion. So I was looking at the Hellwig sway bar. Fortunately, after installing the Eibach kit, um, I'm not looking for one anymore. I don't really need it. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. But again, the, the shocks are awesome. So on the road, I've done a tiny bit of off-roading, just kind of mild stuff. But uh, overall, the truck and everything, I mean, it feels great. No longer wincing when I'm about to hit bumps. And the biggest thing I notice is there's no more rebounding after hitting a bump. So basically, I hit a bump, the bumps in the past. Uh, with the previous, with the OEM uh, struts and shocks, I'd hit a bump and I'd be feeling it down the road a few, um, for a couple seconds because the shocks and struts just were blown at that point. Other than that, very happy with the kit. So appreciate watching the video.